I want to talk about high dimensional spaces. Um, and this is an intrinsic uh, big data problem. It's actually just a data problem. Don't even need to get very big data to have high dimensions. Um, so first of all, uh, when we do think of big data, we hear things like, uh, hey, I went and had a bunch of, uh, you know, I went to um, this site that streams different songs and I found all these different peoples and their song preferences and I was able to cluster them and say that, hey, these, these group of people all had similar tastes and this bunch of people over here had different tastes. Okay. Um, and you think about that, I have sort of an idea in my head of a 3D space with points, of these users being points. And yeah, that all these points are close to each other and all those points are close to each other. But it's just song preferences. What are the point, what are the axes on that? Yeah. Um, or uh, Netflix, uh, hey, these two movies are similar. Uh, or this whole group of movies is all kind of similar to each other, maybe similar director, same director, similar director, similar years, genres. Yeah. Uh, so let's go ahead and think about what you know what the dimensions we're talking about when we're talking about clustering. And the clustering is the topic we're going to get to for this class. Uh, we're going to spend a while just talking about this video and another video just talking about general concepts um, about higher dimensions. So, okay, uh, let's look at uh, something simple. If I had a class point and two fields, maybe called X and Y, that's clearly a two-dimensional object, okay? And if I had three fields, you know, it feels like I could call that a three-dimensional object. And I could sort of, if, especially if they're all doubles, <laughs> I could definitely have an idea of uh, an image in my head of a 3D space and the, these points here being all similar and these po points over here all being related to each other. Um, so yeah, and if I had five fields, that's five dimensions. If I have 20 fields, that's 20 dimensions. Um, in a spreadsheet, spreadsheets are very visual and look very graphic. Uh, if you have a 2D table, um, at first I was thinking, oh yeah, that's, that's going to be a, a two-dimensional sort of data object. Uh, and then I thought, really, no, you have a 2D table, but every cell in the table, you have a value there. So you like, might have for every month, you have a bunch of products, and then how much you sold that month on that product. Um, sorry, I got my columns wrong. I got it backwards. Um, yeah, that's really three-dimensional data, because I have, again, the month and the, which product I'm dealing with and what the sales amount was. Uh, so spreadsheets, you know, might be a three-dimensional data. Um, sometimes you're doing work in spreadsheets and I'll say, hey, great, I have that and I have all the sales data per state. And now I'm like, oh, that's another dimension. And spreadsheets be start to become unwieldy. You, start, you, know, might, you might have a separate sheet, different layer. Like you actually think of them as layers, right? So it's a cube uh, where you have the information in each cell of this cube, and that's four-dimensional data. Uh, Beyond four, you tend to actually use your spreadsheet more like as a database. Um, a database with three columns is three-dimensional. A database with ten columns, ten-dimensional, just like our our fields um, uh, of that Java object. I mean, if you think about it, uh, a database with ten columns is an, each row is an object with ten fields. Yeah. Okay. Um, so Netflix comes along and says, "Hey." these movies are all similar to each other, and those movies are all similar to each other. And then you can do things like, hey, if you like this movie, you, like, you might like these other ones similar to it, okay? Um, how can we do that? How can we quantify that and get programs to come up with these things? Uh, so you can think about, uh, here's just, I'll, we'll come back and revisit this a little bit more, but I might start with um, class movie info, and for every movie I keep track of its title and, and maybe I'm just going to start with here with a whole bunch of booleans. Is this a comedy? Is it a drama? Yes or no. Uh, is it dark humor? Yes or no. Um, and, you know, is it a romance? Is it this? Is it that? Uh, and then go ahead, you know, you, and you might have, you know, there are action comedies out there that have an element of drama and things like that. So you might have movies that fit in several categories. But we're going to think of this as, for right now, I think if there's a big vector of booleans. I have 20 booleans. One, one, zero, zero, one, 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 one. This is a point in a 20-dimensional space. Okay. 
if I have 20 booleans that I'm tracking, okay? And some points are closer than others. Uh, 11100 is pretty close to maybe 110100. Yeah, they only differ in a single bit. And it would be very different from 0010001. You know, that would be a different amount. They differ in almost all the bits. Um, okay, so, yeah, we have, our data is high dimensional. Whether we ever thought about it like that or not, it is high dimensional. So, uh, let's go and look to see what uh, high dimensional spaces look like. And for this, I'm going to go to Wikipedia, come back to that. Uh, I'm going to talk about a cube and a hypercube, a cube in three dimensions and a cube in four dimensions. And so we have this here. Here's our three-dimensional cube. Um, and in that example I just had, imagine I had three booleans. And false, false, false might correspond to the origin. Yeah, maybe that point here. And um, uh, true false, false might correspond to a a point. In fact, for each of those three booleans, if this is false, 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 each of the th making one of those three flipping that bit might mean go along that dimension. Okay. So yeah, I can go ahead and if you stare at this too long, it's going to start looking really warped. But um, yeah, I can go ahead and think of uh, three booleans as being the corners of a sphere, uh, uh, a cube. Um, well, what if I have four booleans? Okay. Well, that would be a four-dimensional cube, uh, a tesseract, if you're going off and watching uh, Wrinkle in Time. Uh, and here's one way of drawing it. Now, it's hard to draw. It's a really a four-dimensional object. It's hard to draw it in three dimensions, and so we have these different representations. Um, geometrically, a four-dimensional cube, all edges, you know, at every vertex, there's now four neighbors instead of three neighbors, and they're all at right angles to each other in a four-dimensional space. We can't see that here. Let's go. I do like um, looking at how to come up with things here. Can I zoom? Let's try. I'm not sure if zooming is going to work on this video. Well, I'll find out when I watch it a little bit later. Uh, but uh, here's one idea of how to come up with higher dimensional cubes. Uh, take what you have and duplicate every corner of the cube. Okay, so start, start with a square and say, hey, I'm going to make another copy of a square and extrude it and make a connection between the, the old and new corresponding points. Okay, so the upper left corner of this new copy of the square and the upper left of the old square, I'm going to have an edge between those, a blue edge in this diagram here. And that's how I go from a square to a cube. Well, now, now it makes sense I have a way of talking about going from a cube to a hypercube. Uh, I'm going to take a copy of the cube extrude it all out, and then say, hey, there's also an edge from the corresponding points. So, okay. So you can go ahead and uh, think of higher dimensional shapes looking like that. Uh, I'm not going to worry too much about trying to visualize it, but I definitely do for hypercubes. I definitely have this picture in my head, and it's, I think, a useful picture to have in your head. Um, again, trying to draw in three dimensions, um, Really, just like if you had a real cube, you could cast a shadow onto a piece of paper and get, and some sh sometimes it might be like that the shadow might look exactly like a square. Sometimes you might rotate it and it looks like a weird hexagon, especially if you just have the framework and you see the skeleton. Um, if you, in fact, if you think about it, I'm looking at the, the, these shapes on a two-dimensional flat screen, so already I'm seeing a shadow onto a two-dimensional shape, even of this cube. Um, and so, yeah, that's what this last image is here. We're going to scroll down. Uh, this weird rotating thing. Here's a four-dimensional sphere that's they're shining a light on it and showing me the shadow that's casting in three dimensions. And they're just rotating it. And it looks kind of funky. I don't see things that... I see things that don't look like they're at right angles to each other, but they really are. Just like when I take a shadow of a sphere and project it onto a piece of paper, I have things that look like they're you know, 60 degrees and 30 degrees and not really a right angle. Okay. So if I have a bunch of Booleans, I'm really thinking of the vertices, the corners of a sphere, a uh, cube in high dimensions. Okay. So I'll let you play around with the Wikipedia page on your own. Um, and I will show that... Uh, 
this here, this is a uh, uh, Dolly's, uh, it was renamed the Crucifixion. It was originally called the uh, Corpus Hypercubus, I think. Um, and if you think about a regular cube, and if you have a little cube made of paper and you unfold it, it will turn into something that kind of looks like a cross. Uh, you can unfold it uh, into the six faces, and it might look like a cross. And this would be the unfolding of a hypersphere here. So Dolly went ahead and uh, drew that version up. Okay. Um, so. Anyway, we have high dimensional data. Uh, if we have a bunch of booleans, I think of them as corners on a hypersphere. Uh, why do I keep saying that? I'll fix this video someday and make a version where I don't misspeak all the time. Uh, I think of them as corners on, the, on a hypercube. Um, by the way, if I have values that are doubles between zero and one, then those are points in the sphere or it's in, uh, the cube or its interior. Right, so, and that all makes perfect sense as well. Okay, um, so, by the way, I just wanna make a little observation that's gonna be, uh, I don't know, may, may be of interest. Um, if you have a circle, what fraction of the points are near its boundary, say within 1% of the boundary? Now, you might say, well, about 1% of the points should be within 1% of the, the, and I'm talking about a circle, two dimensions on a disc. And I really do mean circle this time. Um, so I have this disc. What points are right near the edge of that disc, of the entire, uh, of the entire disc? You might say, well, about 1%, but really, you know, that there's a lot more uh, area as it gets bigger. Uh, the circumference gets bigger. There's uh, Things are within 1% of the outside. There's a lot more of those points than are within 1% of the very center or 1% of the radius one half circle. Uh, it turns out for a two dimensional uh, disc, about 2% of the points are 1% of the boundary, okay? And for a sphere, about 3% of the points are within 1% of the boundary. And for a hypersphere, it goes up 4%. You know, this is definitely an about, it's not like, and this trend continues, um, but of course, it's not exact. It's not the uh, 99 dimensional sphere, and suddenly a 100 dimensional sphere breaks down. Uh, this, our approximation is, becomes a little bit off. But what's the upshot in very high dimensions? All the volume of sphere is right near its boundary. There are very few points that are near the middle. Almost all the points are right near the boundary of a sphere or a region. Okay. Um, by the way, uh, if you have a, what is a, one-dimensional circle, you know, you know, a circle, sphere, hypersphere, whatever that looks like. Um, a one-dimensional, I have a line, and draw a circle in that line. The circle is everything at radius r away from the origin, maybe. Oh, that'd just be plus, one, plus r and minus r. And the interior would be that line segment. And now if you have a line segment, say, hey, what fraction of the points are within 1% of the endpoints? Yes, yeah, so that's gonna be about 1% of the, um, uh, of the total number of points. So, yeah, that's uh, that kind of makes sense. Okay, uh, let's go and look at actually measuring uh, distances in higher dimensions and different ways of mentioning uh, distances. That's what we'll do in the next video.